Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Taco. Today I have the opportunity to work on a reel that Scott sent in. It's a beautiful reel. This is an Olympic 530 ball bearing reel from the 70s. Olympic was a Japanese manufacturer and uh, this one claims to be high speed retrieve and ambidextrous. When was the last time you saw ambidextrous? Well, when was the last time you used it? But when was the last time you actually saw it on a fishing reel? Well, what that means, of course, is that you can load the handle from either side and make it, well, ambidextrous. <laughs> well, we're going to uh, take this reel apart. We're going to service it. We'll show you how it's made. And if you have one of these, you'll learn uh, a little bit more about it and a little bit more about the Olympic company as well. Well, to get started, we're going to remove the exterior pieces, but before I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like the art of fishing reel repair, if you like it as a hobby, maybe you're even using it as a business, and you want to learn a little bit more about the fishing reels. I work on all kinds of reels. I work on the salt water, fresh water. I work on spinning, trolling, low profile, bass reels, anything that basically comes into my shop, you get the opportunity to see as I create videos about it to show you how to do it yourself. That's kind of the idea behind Second Chance Tackle. Get the old reels working and uh, let you uh, have the opportunity to learn and uh, to service your reels so that you keep them running for a long time to come. Well, to remove the handle, you want to remove the through screw. It's a nice aluminum cap on that one. When I take my pieces and parts off, I put them into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a fast food container. Uh, pretty much open to using whatever you like. Pull the handle out, and if you like, just to further help you keep the track of your parts, well, put that screw right back onto the handle so you know where it is when it is time to reinstall. This one's got a click going to it for an anti-reverse dog. Whenever I take a reel apart, I like to disable that click allowing it to spin both ways. And I do that because sometimes that anti-reverse dog will get trapped in the main gear or the, the assembly that's holding that click. And if it gets trapped, sometimes it'll dislodge springs and the like, and well, you'll, you'll have to have some fun trying to figure out which way they went. So if you take that leg off, you allow it to spin backwards and get it out of the way when it's time to to take the parts off internally, you got a better chance of keeping them real. We're removing the three side plate screws now. These seem to be stainless steel. This reel is in beautiful condition. It's a survivor. Scott found a good one at his local flea markets. And I like to take them and put them on my table first to make sure that those screws are all the same size before I continue. All right, the three screws are out. We should be able to remove the side plate now. And my guess on this one is exactly what I'm seeing here. My guess is that this reel is going to be what I call grease choked. It uh, hasn't been used in a while. Any old greases have just accumulated inside the casing and the like. You can see it here. It's puddled up. And it's on the gears. And that's what needs to be cleaned up in order to complete the service on this reel. A lot of the service is nothing more than disassembling, uh, removing all the parts from the reel, disassembling it, then working to make sure that they're cleaned, inspect them so that you can determine if there's anything that needs to be replaced, and then just reassembling the reel and getting it fishing again. Well, this one has a, an arm that's held in place by a pivot pin that goes through our axle shaft and rides in a groove on both sides of the case. On the front side of the case, that would be this groove. That's the one that had the grease in it that I just kind of cleaned out. And there's one that's corresponding to that in the back. Next piece I'm going to do then is to remove that arm because you can see there's a lot of old grease on that as well. If the grease is nice and fresh and the like and wipes off easily, you don't need to use any kind of degreaser or that. Just use a paper towel. In this case, this stuff is, is dried up. So I'm going to use a penetrating oil. In this case, it's WD-40. But any penetrating oil will do. And when I do that, I make sure to clean all of the old greases off of that. 
Once it's clean, that goes into my parts tray. Next piece up then, I have removed the pin that holds that axle shaft. So we can remove the axle shaft by pulling up. And again, you can see the same thing here. There's a lot of dried grease on it. I'm going to take a light 4-0 steel wall. I'm just going to kind of buff it off and then feel it, make sure that it's nice and smooth. And then I'm going to take this off. We'll service the drags later. But I'm, I'm wondering if there's any need for service. It looks like this reel has not been fished very much, but there's no sense skipping steps in the service either. When you take that cover off, note that there is a V-spring. It's sitting right here. It sits in this cavity and it controls the tension on the override swing arm. If you start playing around with that now, chances are you're going to pop that spring out. Maybe you're even watching this video because it's out and you don't know where it goes. That's where it goes. See if I can remove that to show you the spring. It's kind of tucked in there pretty good right now. That's a heavy spring. Most of the time they're not that heavy. All right, well, it's kind of stuck in there. We're going to let a sleeping dog lie. We're going to pull out the main gear because we can see that there's an awful lot of grease in there that has to be cleaned. We'll do the same thing that we just did with the other piece. I'm going to use the WD-40 to let that kind of soften up a bit. And we'll show you the rest of this reel then. So this is your anti-reverse dog. We have a little bit of grease kind of stuck there. We'll get that off. And when you move the handle, I'm going to hold that pin. I don't want that to, to go the wrong way. You'll see that the dog comes in and it meshes with one of the slots here on the pinning gear. So that's how it's going to stop the reel. And when you put it in the override position, it pulls back. If you took this reel apart and you're wondering how that spring goes, there's a spring that comes down and laps, wraps around this screw, comes out the other side, and has a hook to the back neck of the arm right there. Okay, we can go up top then. We can remove the holding nut. My guess is that's a 12 millimeter. Just have to find my 12 millimeter side. Socket. I keep all of these close by because most of the time when you're working on a reel, you'll find that a reel like this that has a rotor cup rather than a, a, um, rotor, a, a rotor where the spool goes over the top, skirted spool, well, a lot of times that bowl is too deep to, to bring a wrench in. So what you want to do is you want to clear the, the wall of that with a uh, ratchet. All right, this comes up. When I do this now, I've, I've tested this before. This is working fine. I'm just going to, to spray the junctures and the trip mechanism with the penetrating oil. That'll just help them loosen up any dirt that's there, but this one's firing just fine. You do not need to service the bale or remove the bale if you're running into an issue where um, there is no problem with it, then by all means, leave it alone. If you find uh, you have a problem with the bale, then of course you want to take that off. All right, I'm taking a um, snap ring pliers now because this is held in place with a snap ring. There's a burring under here. You want to locate the two ears for the snap ring. There's two points on the snap ring pliers. They go inside those little holes and then you pull in and I always shield these things. These things can shoot but that's your snap ring. Okay to remove the bearing then I'm going to grab a little hook and slide it underneath. Work it around and pull it up. Now this has got a, a nylon shield to the bearing. Actually it looks like a sealed bearing quite honestly. We're going to put a little bit of oil in there, see if it seeks in. Should have a little bit of luck with that. And then all we have to do here is clean the case. The case is very clean to begin with. As I mentioned, there's only a little bit of evidence of, of any kind of greases there, which makes you think that the reel probably wasn't used too much if it was used at all. And uh, well, we can just go ahead and reinstall. 
This came out from the bottom. We want to make sure that we clean the grease that's kind of huddled up around that anti-reverse click there. And I'm probably getting a little, a little bit um, adventurous here by leaving those parts on my table, so we'll uh, we'll take those off. And then I'm just going to use a pick to pull out those old pieces of grease that's lying in the channel there. These are very nice reels. They use a, a fairly uh, standard type of a crosswind arm. You won't find them in many reels today, but at the time uh, they were very prevalent. They're mostly in Japanese reels, so you'll find it on things like uh, the Ryobi series of reels. Now, Olympic made reels for others in addition to uh, making them for themselves. I'm going to use a brush now to clean out the, the rest of those channels. And once you're satisfied that the, the housekeeping has been done, go ahead and take some fishing reel grease. In this case, I'm using uh, pen precision reel grease. And just make sure that it gets a nice coating of grease as you go to reinstall. There's a little section here that acts as a bushing. Make sure that that gets some grease on it as well. Okay, this one came in from the bottom and the bearing came in from the top. So let's uh, see if we can't go ahead and put that back together. Remember, there's two sides to this. The, the full nylon side goes down. Let's make sure we get that seated and pressed in all the way because we have to put that retaining clip back in. There we go. Get your retaining clip. Again, these things tend to shoot. When you go to pull these in, be careful. I like to start, before I put any pressure on these, I like to start by anchoring the back of this and then pulling in the front. And then if you get one side in, you can usually get the other side in. And make sure you're in the groove when you reseat that. Okay, that's in. We're all greased up on the pinning gear. We've taken the uh, penetrating oils and we've sprayed down the rotor. This rotor's totally clean. And all we want to do now is grab that rotor nut and put that back on and we'll be done with that portion of the service. Well if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, maybe uh, you want to know a little bit more about the reel history, maybe you've got a totally different reel and you're just looking for some guidance. I just had somebody before they reassemble the reel and it's working tight and, and uh, what can they do and uh, well, I tried to offer them some hints. I'm going to hold this tight. I'm going to put that anti-reverse back on just to make sure that we're, we're working fine and when you hear your, your reel clicking like that that's what's making the noise. I'm going to put that in the back off position. Come over to the main gear now. That uh, Penetrating oil has been sitting there for a while, so we're going to go clean that up now. And you can see it makes it easy work to get the old greases off. Once I get the majority of those greases off, I'm going to use a, a wire brush just to, to knock it out, just like we did with the pinion gear. That way you can assure that you have all the old greases out of the teeth. And while you're doing this, check the teeth. Make sure that they're all uniform. If there's not uh, one in there that's bent or chipped or missing because your performance of your reel will be affected by that. Okay, the back end of this reel is clean then. I'm going to do the same thing here. This one just, it's, it's clear. It's just got a little bit of residual dried grease in there, so we'll just mop it up that way. And because this is a channel where that stud from the Anti uh, from the crosswind arm is going to ride and put a little bit of grease into that channel. 
you don't need much. I just got a reel in the other day making an awful lot of noise. It's a Mitchell 300 and the fellow said, boy, this is loud. And I opened it up and well, there wasn't any grease inside. So it was just metal on metal. And yes, that will make it louder than, uh, than it should be. By the same token, don't use grease to mask a problem. I had another fellow said, no matter how much I grease the reel, I still get a grind. Well, it's not the grease or it's not the lack of grease with that grind. It's something else. And make sure that you uh, don't try to just cover it up by overloading something with grease. Main gear goes in next. There are no bearings on the back side. This is a one bearing reel. We saw that. Next up then we want to take the axle shaft and the cross wind arm. Now most of the time that uh, bottom pin comes out and you need to make a reference point in terms of which which of the uh, surfaces belong. It's a little tight. I want to make sure they get some grease on that. You want to make sure which, which reference point goes on that cross line line before you uh, load. Okay, in this case the pin is on the back side so we know what is, what's front, if you will, and what's back. I'm going to remove the shim washer on the main gear. That's going to hold that cross line arm in place. Insert the pin and then rotate this so that it sits flush on the main gear. When you do that now, go ahead and put some grease on there. Add some grease on the back end of the, the main gear surface where that's going to slide. And then take that retaining washer, put that in. And we can close up the bottom of this reel. So far we've cleaned. We've re-lubed. Before you put the screws in now, you want to make sure that that stud is in that track there. So spin the reel and make sure that it spins nice and easily. You can already see that there's quite a difference from the, the greasing and the cleaning going on here. Three screws going next. Now we'll go tighten them down. Now, because these are triangular, it doesn't really matter which screw you tighten first or last. If this was a four screw setup, I would try to alternate right, left, up, and down just to keep equal tension. But in this case, it's three sided, so you're pretty much going to share it regardless of which one you start with. Okay, this is the bottom of the reel with the exception of the handle, so let's go put the handle on. On the handle, you have a collapsible handle. This nut will open it up and close it down. I'll show you how that works in a moment. Put a little bit of oil there, put a little bit of oil on the seam, and uh, that'll keep that nice and fresh. Insert your handle through the main gear, and then bring the other one in from this side. I've called this a screw, but it's actually a nut. Go figure. threaded side is on the other. Okay, if you want to collapse the handle, which is where we are now, you turn your handle button in a counterclockwise manner. That'll allow the handle to fold. And when you want to reuse it, well, turn it in that clockwise manner and it will tighten it up. All right, one more piece to do. It's the drag washers. I'm thinking these drag washers are either going to be felt or Teflon. Let's find out. There's a square clip here that's holding it in. Just like we did with that snap ring. Hold your finger on that spring so it doesn't shoot. And then just set it safely into your, your basket. Let's remove the stack. See what we have here. Take pictures. If you're at a point here where you don't know what uh, what's going on and take the pictures so that you can see what the stack is. The stack has got a nice amount of washers in it. These are cork. Interesting. 
These are porous, so one of the things you can do is put some grease on that. That'll go into the pores. I'm using a dry grease here. You don't need to use a dry grease. A fishing reel grease is fine. And put the grease on and insert the first piece. We have two of these cork washers. This doesn't want to let it sit. We have two rounds and an eared washer in the middle. The first of the round is called a keyed washer. That goes next. We'll do the same thing with the second washer now. Put a little bit of grease on there. I use my gloved hand to wipe it in and use it as a tool. See if we can get that one to stick any better. The middle washer is the one with the ears. That goes in the middle. And then we have this wavy tension washer which goes on top as your third washer. And then we have the the tie down washer. So that's how you service the drags. If they were broken, if they were dry, if they were chipped and underperforming, they would need to be replaced. Finding a replacement for these these days would be tough, but you can order dry washers by size. So you may not uh, find one specifically listed for an Olympic reel, but you should be able to find one uh, with the right measurements. When I, uh, when I work with reels that are no longer viable to uh, keep working. I take the drag washers out of them because a lot of times I can use those drag washers in another reel where well, they're, they're no longer available. Just going to tighten up the drag now. We want to get this adjuster knob on. That's the Olympic symbol there, right? Tighten it down, make sure it's holding, which it is, and then back it off. You don't want to press those greases and that out of there when you're not using it. After every fishing trip, you should back off your drag. Take the tension off of it. If you don't, it acts like a vise and it just compresses it and shortens the life of the lubrication or the drag washer. Well, time to give it a, a try then. Well, we're without the click at the moment and it turns beautifully click on now for the anti-reverse, louder than ever. Let's make sure our bail functions, and there you go. So Scott, you have a beautiful reel there. Thank you for uh, sending that one in and letting me service it, and more importantly, letting me show all the folks about the uh, how this reel was made and uh, how to keep it running for a long time to come. I hope you've all enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is you do to keep us safe. Your efforts truly are amazing and appreciated. To all, fishing season is upon us. Make sure that your reels and rods are ready to go. If you have one like this, you now know how to service it. If you have a different type of reel, well, stay tuned and stay watching because uh, I handle all types and maybe yours is next. I wish you all well. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.